get this thing to go away. I don't want to see that anymore. Anyway. Hello, Max. Good evening or morning. Is this Max B? things today. Uh, the first one is that I've been working on this little scene here which is part of a, a uh, gumroad tutorial and I'm reaching the pretty much the last stages of this so I'm trying to set up a little animation vignette or something. Um, maybe I could have... I was just trying to set up the lighting with some fog and it's it's been pretty fun just messing around with this stuff as you know we all I am a sucker for the fog in Eevee and um, I'll never stop messing around with the fog but yeah this stuff is really cool it's sort of like painting you just put a light over there and you put a light over here change the colors and Let's see. Yeah. Crazy. And then trying to animate some lights too. Like uh, yeah, this one I think is animated, right? Is it this one? This one, I don't know, where should it go? Over here. And that's just the color. What does that look like? I love how, e even though the light's off the screen, you totally see it in the camera. And, uh, yeah, that's really nice. Hey Igor. <laughs> Alright, so I think um also I think the the it would be cool to put a bit a blinking light on the ship. So I'm gonna try to do that here. Maybe duplicate this light and put it right onto the tip of this little thing over there. Let me make the radius smaller. That is a tiny, tiny light. It's like 0.1. The color, be a little more greenish. It's also pretty bright. Maybe it doesn't need to be that crazy bright. But um, I'm gonna also parent this, or I'm gonna dump it into my ship collection. So M ship. And that should um, duplicate it. Whoa, what the hell? Oh, oops. Okay, so I need to unhide my ship. There's my ship. This is the prototype that all these uh, other ships are based on. So the cool thing about that is we, we just set it up on the prototype one time. Ah, there we go. No, that's not what I wanted. I wanted it over here. Come on. 
Okay, so we have the prototype set up. Let's see. Yeah, and then so now we can move. Uh, press M to move this light into that ship uh, prototype collection, and then just turn off the collection. And now we can see that it's duplicated into every uh, all the instances of that ship. Alright, let me see what it looks like if I move move this one away. Oh shit. Sorry. So how long how much time does it take to make this spaceship? I think I well it's hard to say because I was recording the whole process, which takes a bit of time. And um I think if if you were to sit down and run through this all you could probably do it in a day or two. <laughs> But um, since I was recording this for the tutorial, it's a, l a little bit, it took me, I don't know. Here, let me see how long it, I can tell you how long it took me exactly. So there's, each of these videos here is a section, like, and they're each about, they're each about 10 or 20 minutes. So this is like 20 minutes, this one is 10 minutes. Yeah, so let's say... There's about 31 of these little videos, and each one is 15 minutes, maybe. Let me see. Where's, where's my calculator? 31 times 15 equals 465 minutes divided by 60 equals... So it's about seven or eight hours, I guess. Um, of course, we're running uh, d in the process of doing the recordings, I, I have to re-record certain parts like five times because I suck at talking and I keep, uh, or the, you know, blender crashes or something weird happens, I gotta re-record it. But, um, anyway. So let's see how this looks with the, with the new light in here. I think it's a little bit too bright. So I'm gonna go over to, to that light and Where is it? Where is it? Ship. Where is my light? Let me unhide the ship for a second. Grab that light. Let me name it to um, uh, front light, I guess. And we can also see the the animation of the light over here on top and this is the strength so so right now it's going up to 20 which I think is maybe a bit too strong let me bring my timeline over to right at the peak and then I'll bring this down a bit okay maybe even less because it's not it's not supposed to be a light that's like blinding or is it? I don't know. I guess warning lights do have to be kind of bright so so other people can, or other ships can see it, especially in this heavy, um, thick fog. Otherwise they're gonna crash into each other. <laughs> okay. Let's see if that's any better. I, I also don't like that blue light anymore. Let me move that. Where is that? Stupid. This one. I should probably rename all of these. Let's call this like BG light. And this one also BG light. Okay. And these two are linked together so that they, uh, when I change the colors, they should match. So that's kind of cool. And uh, also the strength, so maybe maybe they don't need as much. But I like how these um, look, especially when they're really close to the lattice. Makes these interesting patterns back there. 
could even put it like inside the lattice maybe and combine with the depth of field I, I think it's nice easy effect you could also try we could try putting these as spotlights so that they um, wait where are you come on oh there we are Maybe they need more strength now. Huh. Weird. All right, I'll just leave it as a point light for now. strong there. All right. Um, let's see. Hey, thanks, Igor. Uh, do, 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 do. Are you using add-ons when you model? Yeah, this stuff is... I'm, I'm using my, um, my own kind of custom configuration. It's called Heavy Poly and it's just a, a bunch of UI stuff. There's, there's a lot of little quirks in the default Blender that I just went through and kind of made scripts for and pie menus to make it go faster. Um, hey, US Votes, morning. That's, that's awesome. Uh, I'll see you in there. What, what is your name, by the way? Because <laughs> would be good to know, unless you're you're go still going under a, uh, unless you're undercover. All right, cool, yeah. Um, anything I need before, then besides download scripts? No, not really, just, uh, yeah, download bl the latest Blender 2.8 scripts, get everything installed and, and ready to go. Make sure you have a microphone if you would like to converse. And, um, oh yeah, and then add, add me on Skype. So um, I sent out an email yesterday, so you should have uh, an email for uh, all the instructions for Skype and all that. So anyway, let's see. We are going, do you think 2D concept art will ever be done? No, I don't think so. Do, 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 do. All right, maybe this orange is kind of weird. Man, this it's so crazy how just changing that one light completely gives you a different look to the whole scene. And there's also these little like god rays here you see coming off of that light. And let's say we want to affect that. It's it's actually in um, let's see, it's in the render settings under volume. So I'm I'm using my config and with my config, you go Control Shift V, and then this is where you get all your object properties. But you can also say, I want the render settings, and in here you get the uh, properties of your volume. So let's say this this setting here called Anisotropy lets you adjust how those God rays look. And then here's the density, make it thicker. And the cool thing is it, it behaves like real life. So when you, when you make the volume thicker, it actually changes the color, which is very realistic. That's, that's how um, our atmosphere works. That's kind of how we get those beautiful colors in our sunsets is from the, the atmosphere. Um, I guess the thicker the atmosphere is, the the more orange the color becomes because it's absorbing more of the the blue color so it's really cool you can sort of play with it um, like pretend like you're a scientist or something and <laughs> just do little light experiments anyway point zero six you can change the color of it too
Do you use any custom Boolean add-ons? Yeah, I, I use my own Boolean Pi. And this Boolean Pi has a bunch of... It's, it's a lot faster than using regular um, Blender Booleans, but like for example, you can toggle on and off all the cu cutters at once. You can do live Booleans and subtracts and everything, cut lines in one click. And you can also apply Booleans in one click. So yeah, it's definitely worth it to try to make Blender a little bit faster. Um, using scripts or, or whatever. Okay, back to the original. yellow better. I wish these could be offset too, you know, so they're not all blinking at the same time because that's kind of awkward. Let me see, is this thing floating? Yes, it is. Okay. So I put a little bit of noise on this so that it, it can like wobble around a little bit just so it looks like it's um, idling Oops. maybe 0.15 this one is 0.15 so what we're doing over here is um, getting the animation of the location of this ship over well shit it doesn't let you zoom in on on collection instances for some reason anyway so we've got this collection let me go to front view and so from the front front view here here let me turn off the other two There we go. I mute, muted the other two channels. So right now we're only animating the up and down location. And it's kind of hard to see here, but <laughs> this, this menu I wish was more readable. But see, we can like make it jiggle around really quickly. If we change the scale of that noise, you can change the strength of the noise, make it go like not so. And just, yeah, this is really a nice way to add in a little bit of more natural looking animation. And we use this noise to do other things too, like it's not only for location, like look at these, the boosters here. So the boosters are also animated using that noise. Where is it? Over here, let's see. So you can see the, the booster is like, is it? Wait. Do I need to boost that up a little bit? Okay, so here's the noise for the booster. Kind of hard to see. Let me isolate it. It doesn't look like, oh. It's really subtle and slow. Let me try making it faster. Oops. There we go. Maybe the strength can be more. I don't know, is that too obvious? Maybe it, need, it needs to be obvious because everything is moving around anyway. And it's kind of hard to... So the only thing I don't know how to do yet it, for, for the, the noise is... I would like to be able to control the offset for each collection instance, like so that these three ships have a different 
uh, noise because right now they're all like doing the same exact noise which is pretty unnatural right so I, if anybody knows how to control each collection instance individually please let me know I don't know but uh, anyway oh thank you Burbank I will add that to my instant coffee fund <laughs> um, Am I using an animation nodes add-on? No, I'm not. I uh, this is just regular Blender stuff right here. The noise. So anyway, what am I doing here? Turn that off. So I also want to try maybe. So right right now my camera is just very stable. It's stationary, but oops. I can also. Grab my camera. Let me see. The camera also has a uh, noise applied to it, so it's it's shaking a, a tiny bit. Let's see. Yeah, you see the camera is just like wobbling around a bit. So, all right. So now I want to try another shot. Like maybe what if what if we get a camera here? And would this be cool? What if we go over here? V create camera at view so now this here I'll, I'll bring the focal length down so this is more like a GoPro or something and it's also going to be attached to the to this vehicle over here and it's duplicating it everywhere because it it's this is inside of the ship the original ship so I gotta move this out of the ship into like main oops Sorry, main. Okay, and let me rename this camera to um, GoPro. <laughs> and so this camera, I want it to be stuck to this ship. So I'm going to go Control P, object to parent it. So now this should follow that ship. And then maybe this one, if it lets me select it. So where does this, or maybe this camera could go like right on the tip of this. a little movie here. How cool is that? It runs real time. Ah, this is so crazy. final render do I change over to the cycles not really let me show you um, I did a couple test renders here and these were done I mean what do you think I mean that looks that looks fine to me and then here's another one I um, I don't see for this for this situation here I don't see the the um, I don't think it's worth it to switch to cycles for this stuff because I think it, it looks good enough as it is I, I think it looks pretty good actually and the volume volume especially for EV is is a big uh, benefit because to, to get this kind of really nice volumetric stuff would take forever in cycles. So 
I gotta find an interesting put place to stick this camera. Alright, so I want to try to make it so that this camera comes after the first camera. So let me extend my frame to like 500 frames. So we got double the time now. And I want, um, I guess when we hit 250, I want to go marker. Oops. Come on. Marker. Bind camera to marker. Okay, so now we see the GoPro is bound to frame 250, so it's going to switch to the GoPro camera. And then, what's my other camera called? This one is called, uh, let me name it, Stationary, or what's more, more descriptive? It's like front three four, front three quarter. All right, so now we go back to frame one. And we go, uh, what is it? Marker, bind camera and markers. So now we got our front camera here. Frame one. Maybe we could bind to the uh, GoPro over here. Say control B, right? No? It's not the hotkeys control B, no? Right? So let's bind to the GoPro. But I kind of like how it's. Okay, we can move that. Because I like when the when the GoPro is coming or like right under the ships, it looks really cool. So, do let's see. Maybe that's. I don't know. Can I copy this? No, I cannot copy it. Damn it. So I gotta go over here, marker, bind camera. So now it's gonna jump back and forth here. I got the GoPro, back to the front camera. Alright, so I need to come up with another camera probably. <laughs> Maybe uh, back view or underneath view. What about like that? It's kind of cool. Um, or is it better to have over here? Oops. Maybe I could put like a gate over here, or somewhere that this ship is going to. All right, V, create camera at view. And I want same thing. More of a GoPro look. Parenting it, parenting it to this. Alright. And then, where were you? I 
Oh yeah, this does not go in. This goes to main. And it's called rear follow. And all right, so let me bind this one here. Maybe over here. Okay, so we start off with that. Then we go to this. I should probably come up with some <laughs> some more shots so it's not just going back and forth over and over. But anyway, that's the idea. It's pretty fun play with this stuff. Um, oh, uh-oh. See, a couple frames are getting dropped. Oops. All right. Well, sorry if this is kind of getting dumpy here. But anyway. Um, yeah, so this will be coming soon. I'm, I'm just wrapping up this final animation part, but all the modeling and texturing and building of this ship is, is done. So I'm pretty excited about that. And um, yeah, and then also, guys, is I know it's pretty late, in the <laughs> late notice, but I'm running a Blender class. And if you're interested in, in learning this kind of stuff, you can check it out here. Sorry guys who have already, you know, I've been kind of like trying to promote this the past week. Cause um, yeah, we're gonna be starting this week on Wednesday and Thursday. If you want to join in, you can check it out here. We're gonna be learning this type of stuff. And uh, here, let me post a link here. So yeah, this is some work from last term. Uh, some of the projects we did. There's um, a sci-fi corridor that Darren did. This is a, a, a Japan night alleyway from Jeremy. This is a weird cat rover mech thing <laughs> by Lip. And um, this sub D Jaguar by, by Darren. So we cover a lot of stuff. There's subdivision modeling for vehicles. There's uh, We do some metaball stuff for this kind of blobby mech um, that was kind of based off of uh, Kao Yokoyama stuff. And then we do tractors, figure out how to do the wheels. We do, um, Jeremy did this corridor that had like, I guess uh, it's it's like a space or a moon base or something where the when the colonists die they use their bodies as f food for the for the vegetation which is kind of sick but also really interesting idea so yeah it's it's fun it's it's sort of like um using blender for concept art for just making quick ideas and building them out and and just playing with lighting and stuff and um yeah, so it's seven weeks. It's all live. So we meet up for about two to two and a half hours every every week. We talk about last week's work, any problems, any questions, and then we do a little demo for the next week's project. And, you, and then you go off and, and do your project. So yeah, it's a quick and fun, I think it's pretty fun class. But if you're interested, check out that link and uh, register. There's two. There's only two spots left um, for this Wednesday class. And um, yeah. Anyway, let's see. Uxer, are you participating in Sculpt January? Well, I don't think I am. I, I don't know how to sculpt. <laughs> I'm per uh, maybe I'll I'll try one, but. I haven't planned to do that. All right, let me save this. Oop. 
What does this look like with the sunlight? Ooh, that's really harsh. make the blend a little bit more for this spotlight. Actually, yeah, somewhere in the middle is nice. I want to see if um, when we when we cross through here it would be nice if something happens to the lighting of the ship, so maybe this is a good spot to put the spotlight. Um, let's see. Yeah, how about like that? So when we pass through, we get that something going on there. It's kind of cool. And I sort of like it more if they're, it's off screen, because then maybe it looks. This one, this one didn't seem to be behaving how I expected it. Like, why isn't it shining light here? Oh, because it's got to be really close. Maybe it needs to be rotated a little bit towards the lattice. Oh no! What's happening? No. Hmm. Change color of nearby rods in lettuce. Uh, well, I want them to all kind of take the color of the light, but, well, this is. Damn it. Alright, so while Blender's crashing, I have another little thing to talk about today, which is um, Mrs. Michelle in Teal, my roommate slash girlfriend. It is her birthday today, and uh, for some reason she's decided to make a sale for her book. But anyway, I've been meaning to do this, like, uh, what? Is everything frozen today? Is everything broken today? God damn it. Anyway, everything's broken. So this this is a book that she's kind of done. Um, well, she's on volume two already, but we'll, we go on trips sometimes and we go painting and stuff. And um, yeah, I'm sure you, if, if you're following this channel, you know that we, like, go do landscape painting a lot. Um, almost every weekend, actually, she's, she's painting. And, uh, yeah, so that some of these are from around in L.A., and some of them are from really far away. 
sometimes uh, let me, wow is everything really frozen I've never seen the internet freeze like this Three. sorry one second but anyway the the link for this is in the in the description of this video <coughs> oh there we go blenders back see where is it yeah in the description of this video got ah there is a link you can check out Michelle's book oh my god sorry guys I'm really bad at streaming ah. so it's really cute there's lots of little paintings in them. They're mostly gouache and a little bit of, um... Wait, what am I doing? I, ugh, I'm such an idiot. I have the book right here. <laughs> All right, so here it is. Let's take a look. The cover is some kind of special paper. I don't know what kind of paper she used, but she kept telling me, like, Vaughn, come feel this paper. It's so soft. This paper is really special. And it has lots of cute little animals. And yeah, we went to Glacier National Park, which is um, sort of on the border of, of the US and Canada. And it was very pretty. There was lots of little mountains and goats and stuff. This is from a cabin in Glacier Park. We didn't stay at the cabin, but we stayed inside it because it was really warm and it was really cold outside and uh, this is I think the highway what is it looking glass road there's some really beautiful highways that go between these parks like from we went from Yellowstone to Glacier Park and just the drive between those parks is like a whole nother park because the drive actually the drive is almost more more beautiful than the um, park itself and then this is uh, St. Mary Falls. What park was that? Is this in Canada? This might be Canada. Um, and the Lake McDonald was. Oh man, my memory is horrible. Oh yeah, this is Glacier Park also. Logan Pass. A lot of the park was on fire at the time that we were there, so we we couldn't see all all of it or did we see all of it let's take a bus through some of it they didn't let you drive and then there was a lot of these really cl crazy places where the clouds were you're above the clouds and then there's also clouds on top of you so you're in a you're in a cloud sandwich and i never saw, saw that before but that was pretty cool so this is our it's a really nice cloud sandwich painting here. But, um, and I like these little watercolor guys. This is uh this is on the Canadian side, Prince of Wales Hotel. Very in weird looking building. It looks like some sort of like fancy gingerbread house. But um it's very nice. Grand Teton was really cool too. A lot of these guys. A lot of bison hanging around. This is where um, Ansel Adams took his, I guess his famous photo of the park that helped. Um, I guess back when these national parks were starting off, up, a lot of these um, artists and photographers would come in and and do paintings and sort of like just to promote the parks and get the word out because people didn't I guess back then people didn't even believe that these landscapes could exist like the way that writers would describe them they're like no way you're you're just making that up but like oh yeah there's a pool that's really aqua and then there's orange rusty looking stuff and then there's like yeah right you, that's bullshit but Thankfully, I guess these, these photos and these paintings helped people to 
get interested in and want to come visit. And I guess also to get funding to, to actually create the parks in the first place. Or, I mean, to, I guess, buy the land and reserve them for the parks. So this is Yellowstone. There's a lot of this weird, really weird, I don't know what this is. It, it looked like salt buildup, and then it created all these weird flat pools. Um, yeah, this is visiting family in Austin to go visit Phil, Michelle's brother, and hang out. Colorado, we visited uh, a friend in Colorado and their family for, I think that was Thanksgiving. Yeah, that was really nice. And then this was um, uh, my friend's wedding in Cancun. At a <laughs> really sh interesting wedding. I've never, <laughs> I've never been to a, like a, a party wedding before, but this was, was interesting. All the, all the grandparents and the aunties and the parents were all like partying pretty hard. It's a very, a fun wedding. And then. Port Portland. Portland is really beautiful and uh, nice place. But all the everyone we talked to said that there's too many people from California <laughs> there, and they're they're sick of California people, and they want us all to go die. Or, no. no, they didn't say that, but they said that they. There's just too many people moving in from California. And here's California. <laughs> Big Sur, probably one of the coolest parks. It's like forest, giant trees right up against the coast on like cliffs against the Pacific Ocean. It's it's a pretty amazing park. And then Solvang, which is a really weird... This is a really strange town that's like I don't know what, what they're going for. It's like a weird Disneyland Dutch place. And then, yeah, a little, some Pasadena stuff. I don't know if there's any art center people in here, but you'll, you'll probably recognize Boca de Beppo <laughs> and, uh, in the mall, because here we are in California. All we have here is malls and, actually, no, we have a lot of stuff. We have mountains and Oh, there's a cover. So yeah. Wait, what was this? Oh, this is the Pacific Asia Museum. And there was a a whole group of us there painting. It was like, I don't know, 20 people across the street from the museum painting. And then this giant yellow bus just like comes and parks there for the whole time. So it, it blocked everybody's paintings. It was great. And then uh, this was the downtown LA, there was like a plein air painting festival. And uh, I don't know, I think Michelle was doing a demo there, this cafe. This is the Burbank car show. They got some good, good cars in Burbank. This is Vaughn's Miata. Hmm. It looks extra cute there. And then more Burbank. Kenneth Hahn, I think this, where was this? It's far, wherever this park is, it's it's a little bit far. This is Travel Town in Burbank. It's also pretty cool, a little spot to, to draw and paint. Um, they have a lot of, like tons of trains and kids' birthday parties, I guess. And then this is a old town in one of the alleyways in Pasadena based off of one of my photos. The funny thing about this painting is that, um, so I took a photo, I did a painting of this at at sunset and another one at night. And I, I, I had, I put those paintings in a couple, like, I, I think I had it in a gallery and I had it at CTN and I had it at all these little booths and stuff trying to sell this damn painting. 
And then Michelle decides to do a painting of it too, and she sells it on her first try, like on the first show. Instantly sold. I'm not bitter. Don't worry. Anyway, so this is Michelle's stuff. She's she's a painter. Check out her work on on the interwebs. Gumroad, Michelle and Teal. And check out this book. She's got a Yeah, so today she wanted to um put it on sale, I guess. So if you want this book, check it out. Um, I think the, there's a little coupon in the description. Anyway. Oh, what am I doing here? What are you guys talking about? You're eating meat. What does meat have anything to do? Ugh, okay. Where's my... Hey Manu, let's see. She might get a bag of apples. That'd be good. Hey brush runner. Hello, hello. Hey, I hope she's watching. Michelle, where are you? Say hello. Anyway. Yeah man, it's nice to go out and paint. Sometimes, once in a while. So now we're going, we're teleporting through the gate here. It's not good. bank I do have good cars in me it's the spirit of Burbank come on are you in Burbank Burbank do you live in Burbank are you in yourself Burbank He's a Burbank exception. Bank exception. better actually. Cut off the end of the animation a little bit. Let's <clears throat> make this more green, probably.
What about switching these two? I think I want the GoPro to happen first, and then the, then the other one. Delete that. GoPro can go back here. figure out a door or something over here. What is this shadow coming from? simmer a little bit longer. GoPro could go and be in a better spot. Hey, Oxer. The big 5 0. Are you going to do any. Are you going to do some special celebration for 50? Sounds reasonable. <laughs> oh no, what did I do?
feel like this light should be some other color. Ooh. Damn. Oxer's uh, trade places put my brain in a 20 year old body without all the opportunity and time. I would be ecstatic. When I was that age, there were no jobs and all the talk was war, war, war. Damn. But gas was cheaper, right? No? <laughs> Never mind. It was Windows 3.1. Oh boy. The Dark Ages. No. <laughs> Under a dollar for gas, but no car. Okay, I see how it's, uh... I guess it never really works out, huh? Just a lot of stuff, Nehale Mateka. God damn it. My voice is gone. I can't. Whoa. You missed uh, Michelle's book. So if you want to see Michelle's book, go on the, the link in the description. And um, she did a painting book. And I was just promoting it a little bit because it's her birthday and I've been meaning to do it. And she's also doing a sale, so. Let's see. Does this thing look like it should be here? This point light? Or is this too much? Is it too much? It might be cool to get some of the details here. Control P, object. And also we're working on this little animation here. Ah, not much animation going on actually. It's mostly just camera movement and lights blinking and stuff. But it's fun. This camera's not in focus, is it? Yeah, this camera's not. Where is this camera? Rear follow. 
you need. There you are. Thank you. Everything was all super. I'm gonna put the f-stop super low, so we can get a little tiny bit of depth of field. This one also is not really in focus. Let me get the GoPro. And also GoPros don't really um, have that much depth of field, do they? Maybe I should turn it off on this one too, rear follow. Should I? Does that look good or is it stupid with all the depth of field? Hey Jeremy. Um, yeah, we were, I was just talking about the exhaust earlier, where we we get to do a little bit of noise with it. If you um, you can animate the strength to a noise, did we talk about that in class? I don't know. But yeah, it's just a uh, an emission and transparent mixed together with Fresnel, or with a uh, facing angle. And I'm trying to tweak, tweak the lighting a little bit. I think this, this light in the back might be kind of distracting. Yeah, I think I think this is maybe enough. I don't know if I should have any more shots. Maybe a top view one. Whoa. A little, 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 little. Yeah, maybe that would be cool actually. E create camera view. Let's rename it. Where is it? Move to main. Name it to the top. Ooh, what happens if we change it to like This one should be top view instead. Yeah. Marker. My camera. So it shows we're going over to this. I'm, I need to put a door here. And then we'll probably show the ship going into the door. Right. So if the door is right here. Let me save this before I kill it. Why is selection acting so weird? Can you stretch open 
the lattice by animating decimate bar for animating. Yeah, you could animate a boolean. That's a good idea, actually. Let's do that. If you wanted to have a door. Let's say we um, mm. excuse me. Oops. All right, let's say we want this door. I mean, this is doesn't make any physical sense, but let's say we want this door to slide open. You could animate this cube here. Like, uh, let's say we want it to slide to the right. I'm gonna set my center to the right side. Apply the scale here. Okay, so now, uh, the way this works is we, we want it to animate. Well, first we gotta subtract it, right? So let's go live subtract. Didn't like that. Let's try solidify before the boolean. There you go. So now it's cutting through, and I think I need to do another one of those for here. Here, let's go solidify, and then grab that cutter, and cut into these doors. Control B, live subtract. And this one too. All right, let me just delete those. Okay. Okay, so now all we gotta do is when we scale this thing, what the fuck? Let me select you. See how when we scale it, it sort of like cuts away the door or the whatever it is that's behind it. So all we gotta do is animate like. Let's say when the ship is coming up to it, it starts to uh, let's say it starts at scale zero. Okay, starts at zero, so the door is closed, and then so right now the scale is at zero. I'm gonna hit keyframe, go in up in time in a little bit and then this goes up to one or whatever it could go up to like that far I don't know oops all right so then when we go back to here, to the beginning, there it is. Let me, oh my god, what is wrong with this selection? Let's make it a little bit slower. So there it goes. Parent the boolean to the ship so the door can open wherever the ship is. That's that's also a pretty cool idea. So like, if you have a boolean cutter flo floating in front of the ship, and it just like digs holes wherever it goes, it's a good idea. Um, do, 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 do. But if we want a sliding door, then we got to do it this way. Anyway. Okay, guys. Anyway, that's it. That's my my goal for today. I think we.
covered a lot here. I'm going to sort of try to re-record re this and make it a lot cleaner. And yeah, so this, this uh, Gumroad video will be out soon for 2.8. It'll be the first 2.8 video. But anyway, thanks for joining in. Thanks for watching. All the suggestions and stuff. It's been fun. And uh, yeah, have a good day. I'll see you next time. I close this.